morning, Mayor. Hi, Mer. Hey, what you looking for? Oh, just some kind of offbeat character we might be able to use as a feature tonight. Oh, any luck? No, so far the best I can come up with is a man who can play the flight of the bumblebee by hitting his head with a wet spatula. Ooh. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Stan. Uh, listen, Mer, about tonight's hey, Excuse me. Do you know how long it takes to fly from Minneapolis to New York? Oh, about two hours, I think. I was thinking about... <clears throat> Do you know how long it takes to get from the airport in New York to the center of New York? Oh, uh, about three quarters of an hour, mm. I think. I was thinking... Do you know any the... good hotels in New York? Any good restaurants or any good shows to see in New York? Are you by any chance going to New York? Boy, try to keep a secret around here. <laughs> Well, as long as the cat's out of the bag, I might as well tell you the whole story. I've been asked to go to New York to audition for a host for a big new game show. You're kidding. <laughs> host of a game show? Well, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. All the luck in the world, Ted. <laughs> you want to know how much the job pays? Not really. But, Ted, it's not that I'm not interested, but you already make a lot more than I do. Oh, well, a lot more. <laughs> it's a little depressing to hear that someone you know... And respect that someone you know is earning more money than you are. Ted, I don't want to discuss salaries. It's nobody's business how much anybody makes. You're right, it's nobody's business that I make $750 a week, and you only make $280 a week. <laughs> and he only makes $275 a week. Uh, $215, $187, $187.50. <laughs> uh, you're right, Mary. It was foolish and insensitive of me to bring up the subject. I mean, you think a guy that's going to be making a thousand dollars a week would have more brains than to... <laughs> what makes you so sure they're going to choose you for the job, oh, Ted? Oh, come on, Murray. They have to. With Ted's intelligence, they're certainly not going to ask him to be a contestant. <laughs> Thanks, Murray. Well, there's no point in being modest. I know they're going to choose me. I got a feeling that I'm going to get lucky. I only had this feeling three times before in my life. Once when I won the football pool, once when I won a color TV in a raffle, and on my 43rd date with Georgette. <laughs> I'm gonna break the bad news of the big fella. Well, I hate to do this. It's gonna break the big lug's heart. <laughs> Lou, I've got something to tell you. Better brace yourself, Lou. I've been asked to go to New York to try out for a host of a new game show. I know this may come as a shock to you, but if I get it, I'm afraid it means I'm going to have to leave WJM News. No. Oh, lots of luck, Ted. Any calls, Mary? No. <laughs> Look how he hides the pain. <laughs> Georgette, would you like some more buttermilk? No, thank you. I've already had two glasses. I really appreciate your inviting me over to brunch, Mary. Oh. It's lonely with Ted gone. Georgette, he's only been gone a few hours. Yes, but with Ted, a few hours can seem like a lifetime. I know, I know. Everything was really delicious, Mary. Thanks. I especially love the mushroom omelet. You make it exactly the same way I do. Oh, really? Yes. You'll have to give me the recipe sometime. <laughs> Mary, I really need help. What's on your mind? It's not going to be easy, Mary. Georgette, what is it? It's something I can't discuss. Well, Georgette, if you can't discuss it, then how can I help you? I told you it wasn't going to be easy. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what. Why don't you just say it straight out? Just... I have an impure thought, and I'm ashamed of myself for having it. Phew. <laughs> when I dropped Ted off at the airport this morning, I wished him good luck with his audition. But down deep, do you know what I was really hoping? I was hoping he'll fall on his keister. <laughs> Please forgive my language. It's just the buttermilk talking. <laughs> Mary, if Ted gets this audition and goes to live in New York, he'll forget all about me. Oh, Georgette. Oh, after two weeks there, he'll have Barbara Walters breaking down his bedroom door. <laughs> 
I can't believe that. <laughs> Neither could I when Ted told me. <laughs> Mary, what am I going to do? Well, in the first place, you're going to stop feeling guilty about the way you feel. I mean, Georgette, I've known you for three years. I think I can honestly say you have never had an impure thought in your life. And in the second place, I really don't think you have anything to worry about. I mean, Ted is a very <clears throat> talented man. But New York is highly competitive. I don't think Ted has a chance of making it. With the quiz show or with Barbara Walters? <laughs> You're number two, and you, Mrs. Franklin, are on horse number three. Okay, everybody, we're ready to do the next audition tape. Uh, Ted Baxter. Yo! <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hello. All right, Mr. Baxter, here are the names of the contestants and some jokes which our five writers have done. Five writers? Oh, this really is a big time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if I had jokes like this in the news, I'd have been a star long ago. Have you got any questions? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, who decides whether or not I get the job? I do. Why? Oh, no reason. Just ask me. Yeah, I'd like your jacket. <laughs> Thanks. I sure a smart tie. Ted, you want to take your place? Yeah, all right. Okay, places, everybody. Great shoes. <laughs> Ted Baxter audition. Take one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to play $50,000 steeplechase. And here, coming around the home stretch and the clubhouse turn, is your quiz master, Ted Baxter! <laughs> I'm Ted Baxter, and welcome to the $50,000 steeplechase. Now, today we're going to have fun, fun, fun. Remember, this is a horse race, so pick your favorite and root them in. Get as excited as you like. Shout, scream, kiss the woman in the next seat if you feel like it. Of course, if it's your wife, just shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, some of you are going to win a lot of cash, so for heaven's sake, don't throw it away. Who knows, someday it may be worth something. <laughs> shake hands. <laughs> All right, now let's meet our contestants before they get saddle swords. Number one, Elliot Jensen from Denver, Colorado. Let's hear it for Elliot. How you doing, Elliot? Good guy. Welcome to the show, Elliot. All right, now, what do you do in Denver, Elliot? I own a filling station, Ted. A filling station, huh? What a coincidence. So does my dentist. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hey, number two, Mrs. Charlotte Gruen of Pasadena, California. Listen, Mrs. Bruin, it says here that you teach swimming. Is that right? That's right. Well, stick around. After the show, maybe you and I can go into a few dives. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Number three, Mrs. Joyce Franklin of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Let's hear it. How are you, Mrs. Franklin? Welcome aboard. Listen, I understand you're married to a fisherman. Is that right? That's right. I'll bet when you go to bed, you tell him, not tonight. I have a haddock. <laughs> okay, well, enough for all of me. It's time to play $50,000 steeplechase. Now, on each of your horses, you'll find a little button. Now, as soon as you know the answer to a question, you just press your button. <laughs> We'll get a chance to advance his horse. Are we ready, contestants? Ready. Ready. Sure. Okay. Are we ready, Ginger? Ready. Too. All right. We're off and running. Here's the first question: True or false? Hubert Humphrey was once vice president of the United States. This is growing. True. You're right. <laughs> True or false? Oh, 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 right. Yes, yes, you're right, Mrs. Franklin. It took Michelangelo four years to paint the Sistine Chapel. 
Good thing you didn't have to use two coats of paint. <laughs> okay, now. Well, we're right down to the finish line. How about this? It's neck and neck. <laughs> Boy, isn't this a great game? <laughs> All right, now, next question. True or false? Charlotte Bronte is the author of Wuthering Heights. Oh, gosh, this is exciting. <laughs> I can't stand it. Remember, you have only five seconds before the gate closes. All right, Mrs. Gruen has blown her bugle. <laughs> now, if she gives the right answer, she wins the race. But remember, Mrs. Gruen, you're in a penalty situation, which means that if you give the wrong answer, your horse breaks its leg and you have to shoot it. <laughs> All right, now, what is your answer, Mrs. Gruen? False. I think it was Emily Bronte. Did you say false? You're right! You're absolutely right. You're right. Thank Her you. horse crossed the finish line. Thank you very much. You did a very nice job. Oh, thank you very much. We still have some other people to see. Uh, we'll be in touch with you next week. Oh, that's all right. I understand. No rush. call for me? No, Ted. Ted, you know, it's been almost two weeks since you went to that audition. Don't you think it's about time you maybe face the fact that you didn't get the job? I got the job, Mary. I got the job. Uh, I'm sorry. Who am I kidding? I didn't, I didn't get the job. They'd have called me by now. Why didn't they hire me? I was wonderful in it. Maybe they're anti-Semitic. <laughs> Ted, you're not Jewish. I know, but I didn't tell them that. Uh, uh, I know why I didn't get the job. It just wasn't good enough. Oh, Ted, come on. It's no disgrace to audition for something and be turned down. I I'm sure that Lawrence Olivier has been turned down for things. I didn't know he did game shows. <laughs> I thought he just did commercials. <laughs> oh, Mary, I wanted to do that job so bad. Oh, Ted, you didn't. Yes, I no, did. No, you didn't. Think about it. I mean, some of those game shows are so silly, the idiotic rules. Oh, no, Mary. It's not idiotic. I mean, it's a wonderful game. It's like a real horse race. I love that game, Mary. <laughs> Contestants made to look ridiculous. Oh, no, silly costumes. no, they didn't look ridiculous at all. They just wore little jockey hats and sat in wooden horses. <laughs> it was all very dignified, Mary. <laughs> I'd put my own mother on that horse. <laughs> the right price should put your mother under a horse. <laughs> Come on, think about it. Even if they picked you for it, you wouldn't go to New York. You couldn't leave us. This is your home. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. What do I want to go to New York for? This is where my friends are, the people that I want to be with, people that love me, that I love. You're right. Newsroom? Yes, just a minute. Ted? New York. Maybe this is my ticket out of this dump. <laughs> Hello? Yes. What? All right, I understand. Right, okay. Oh, thank you very much. Goodbye. I got the job! I got the job! Oh, Mary! Mary, Mary! Mary, I got the job! I got the job! No! No! Ted, why are you trying to lift me off the ground? I got the job, Lou! Oh, okay. <laughs> I got the job! I got the job! Mr. Grant, huh? I have 
terrific news. I just talked to Warren Jessup, and his contract with Channel 6 is up at the end of this month. He is very interested in coming over to WJM. Hey, that's yeah. great. That goes for a drink. What do you have? Uh, scotch and soda. Two scotch and sodas, please. Boy, Warren Jessup. Yeah. He's terrific. He's about the best anchor man around town. I'll bet he'll really boost our ratings. Yeah. Now, we can just have Andy fill until he's free. Right. I mean, Warren is so bright and mm. personable. I just know with him we can put on a show we'll really be proud of. Absolutely. Here you are. Okay. To the new WJM News. <sighs> you feel as rotten as I do? <laughs> Why, Mary? Why? For seven years, let's be honest now, we've all been dreaming of the day Ted would leave. <laughs> Finally, here it is, the night of Ted's last newscast, and we're all miserable. Why? Oh, I know I can't figure it out either. You know, when I was a little kid, I had this little wart <laughs> on my index finger. You had a wart? Yeah, it really used to embarrass me, you know? Yeah. I never knew where to hide my hand. I used to put it behind my back, stick it mm. in my pocket, behind my head. You, you know, it really drove me crazy. Mm. Anyway, one morning I woke up, and the wart was gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know what you're trying to say. Right. If I didn't miss that wart, why should I miss Ted? <laughs> well, Mr. Grant, I know all about Ted's shortcomings. How he's driven us bananas over the years. I'm aware of all that, but is it possible? I mean, is it just possible that deep down, underneath everything, we really like Ted? <laughs> No. <laughs> All right, I admit it. I'm gonna miss him. Well, why don't you tell him that? Maybe if you did, he'd stay. You know, I don't know what to say to him. Just tell him you like him. Yeah. That he's a good guy. Yeah. Tell him how lonely and empty the newsroom is gonna seem without him. Lie! <laughs> Maybe you're right, Mary. Maybe I should talk to him. Okay. Okay. Why don't you go on upstairs? I'll just finish my drink. Okay. You know, funny, isn't it? <laughs> Whoever thought I'd be pleading with Ted Baxter to stay on at WJM? Mm. I, I guess he's not the world's worst anchor man. I mean, he's no Walter Cronkite, no John Chancellor, no Harry Reasoner. But he's got something that they don't have, unpredictability. <laughs> oh, sure, you know when you watch him that he's gonna put his foot in his mouth. But the thing you can never figure out is how he's gonna get the other one in there with it. So this is Ted Baxter saying good night, good news, and goodbye. Gee, Ted Baxter's last newscast for WJM. Yeah. Oh, hi, Georgette. Hi, Mary. What you got there? I have to bring it down to Ted's car. It's some things he wants to take to New York to remind him of all the wonderful times he had here. Oh, how nice. You know, things like pictures, letters, awards. Aww. Pencils, paper clips, ballpoint pens, light bulbs. I guess I got everything, Georgia. Uh. I'm gonna put this in there, too. Okay, Tim. I'll get you down in the car. Okay. Bye, Mary. Bye, Mary. Bye, Georgia. Well, this is it. Ted Baxter's farewell. But unlike General Douglas MacArthur, I shall not return. Gee, Ted, the folks on Batan are really gonna be choked up about that. <laughs> well, I... I better get going, Georgia. It's... Waiting for me. Well, aren't you going to stay and say goodbye to Oh, Mr. no, I've got too many things to do. I'll just call him from the airport. Barry? 
I just want you to know I appreciate everything you've done for me. Because the words you wrote made me what I am. Gee, Ted, I feel four feet tall. <laughs> Mary? Oh, Ted. <sighs> Goodbye, guys. What? What did you say, Lou? Lou? Did, did you say something? Yeah. I said stay. Gee, that's one of the nicest things anyone ever said to me. I'd like to stay, Lou. I, I love it here, but this is my big chance. For what, Ted? So you can go to New York and become a quiz master? <laughs> Is that what you want people to say when you walk down the street? There goes Ted Baxter. He's a quiz master. <laughs> it's not that bad, Lou. Just the way you say it makes it sound terrible. Oh, yeah? Then you say it, Ted. Say, Ted Baxter is a quiz master. <laughs> Ted Baxter is a quiz master. <laughs> you see, Ted, you have to do what you think best. But I want you to know that I will always think of you as a newsman. You mean that, Lou? You always serve the people by broadcasting the truth. You should be proud of that. Oh, sure, there are lots of other jobs that pay more, that are less demanding, but they contribute nothing toward the public's well-being or understanding. A newsman's life has meaning. I mean, you were following in the tradition of men like Charles Collingwood, Elmer Davis, and Edward R. Murrow. There's no finer way a man can spend his life than that. Ted, you were part of a great profession. You were something very special. Something very, very special. You were a newsman. Can I use your phone, Lou? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Mr. Hillman, please. Hello, Mr. Hillman. Uh, this is Ted Baxter, Minneapolis. I want to thank you for offering me the job, but I've been thinking it over, and I decided that I I want to stay here in the newsroom. What? Really? He's offering me another $200 a week, Lou. <laughs> You're a newsman, Ted. A yeah. newsman. Oh, uh, Mr. Hillman, listen, I'm sorry, but it has nothing to do with money. <laughs> what? <laughs> another $500 a week, Lou. <laughs> A newsman, Ted. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Hillman. Oh, it's $150, Lou. <laughs> Mr. Hillman, I'm sorry. Now I've made up my mind. Good, good luck on your show. Uh, thanks a lot. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm a newsman, aren't I, Lou? A newsman? Yes, Ted. You're a newsman. <laughs> and a darn good one, too. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> was narrowly a
averted today when a Russian fishing vessel agreed to withdraw from Norwegian territorial waters. Speaking of fish, <laughs> I'll bet when the captain of that Russian vessel goes to bed tonight, his wife is going to tell him, not tonight, I have a haddock. <laughs> proud of that. Oh, sure, there are lots of other jobs that pay more, that are less demanding, but they contribute nothing toward the public's well-being or understanding. A newsman's life has meaning. You, know, you were following in the tradition of men like Charles Collingwood, Elmer Davis, and Edward R. Murrow. There's no finer way a man can spend his life than that. Ted, you were part of a great profession. You were something very special. Something very, very special. You were a newsman. Can I use your phone, Luke? Sure. <laughs> Mr. Hillman, please. Hello, Mr. Hillman. Uh, this is Ted Baxter, Minneapolis. I want to thank you for offering me the job, but I've been thinking it over and I decided that I want to stay here in the newsroom. What? Really? He's offering me another $200 a week, Lou. <laughs> You're a newsman, Ted. A yeah. newsman. Oh, uh, Mr. Hillman, listen, I'm sorry, but it has nothing to do with money. <laughs> what? <laughs> another $500 a week, Lou. <laughs> A newsman, Ted. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Hillman. Oh, it's $450, Lou. <laughs> Mr. Hillman, I'm sorry. Now I've made up my mind. Good, good luck on your show. Uh, thanks a lot. Goodbye. Oh. 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 I'm a newsman, aren't I, Lou? A newsman? Yes, Ted. You're a newsman. And a darn good one, too. I never said that. <laughs> Averted today when a Russian fishing vessel agreed to. Oh, Georgette, if you can't discuss it, then how can I help you? I told you it wasn't going to be easy. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what, why don't you just say it straight out? Just. I have an impure thought, and I'm ashamed of myself for having it. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> When I dropped Ted off at the airport this morning, I wished him good luck with his audition. But down deep, do you know what I was really hoping? 
I was hoping he'll fall on his keister. <laughs> Please forgive my language. It's just the buttermilk talking. <laughs> Mary, if Ted gets this audition and goes to live in New York, he'll forget all about me. Oh, Georgette. Oh. After two weeks there, he'll have Barbara Walters breaking down his bedroom door. <laughs> I can't believe that. Neither could I when Ted told me. <laughs> Mary, what am I going to do? Well, in the first place, you're going to stop feeling guilty about the way you feel. I mean, Georgette, I've known you for three years. I think I can honestly say you have never had an impure thought in your life. And in the second place, I really don't think you have anything to worry about. I mean, Ted is... A very <clears throat> talented man. But New York is highly competitive. I don't think Ted has a chance of making it. With the quiz show or with Barbara Walters? <laughs> You're number two, and you, Mrs. Franklin, are on horse number three. Okay, everybody, we're ready to do the next audition tape. Uh, Ted Baxter. Yo! <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hello. All right, Mr. Baxter. Here are the names of the contestants and some jokes which our five writers have done. Five writers? Oh, this really is a big time, isn't it? <laughs> Boy, if I had jokes like this in the news, I'd have been a star long ago. Have you got any questions? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, who decides whether or not I get the job? I do. Why? Oh, no reason, just ask me. Hey, I like your jacket. <laughs> Thanks. Nice shirt, smart tie. Ted, you want to take your place? Oh, yeah, right. Okay, places, everybody. Great shoes. <laughs> Ted Baxter audition, take one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to play $50,000 steeplechase. And here, coming around the home stretch and the clubhouse turn, is your quiz master, Ted Baxter! <laughs> All right, Mrs. Gruen has blown her bugle. Now, if she gives the right answer, she wins the race. But remember, Mrs. Gruen, you're in a penalty situation, which means that if you give the wrong answer, your horse breaks its leg and you have to shoot it. <laughs> Sir, Mrs. Gruen. False. I think it was Emily Bronte. Did you say false? You're right! You're absolutely right. Your horsey is All right. Thank you. Her horsey crossed the finish line. Thank you very much. You did a very nice job. Oh. Thank you very much. We still have some other people to see. Uh, we'll be in touch with you next week. Oh, that's all right. I understand. No rush. call for me? No, Ted. Ted, you know, it's been almost two weeks since you went to that audition. Don't you think it's about time you maybe face the fact that you didn't get the job? I got the job, Mary. I got the job. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Who am I kidding? I didn't, I didn't get the job. They'd have called me by now. Why didn't they hire me? I was wonderful in it. Maybe they're anti-Semitic. <laughs> Ted, you're not Jewish. I know, but I didn't tell them that. Uh, uh, I know why I didn't get the job. It just wasn't good enough. Oh, Ted, come on. It's no disgrace to audition for something and be turned down. I I'm sure that Lawrence Olivier has been turned down for things. I didn't know he did game shows. <laughs> I thought he just did commercials. 
Oh, Mary, I wanted to do that job so bad. Oh, Ted, you didn't. Yes, I no, did. No, you didn't. Think about it. I mean, some of those game shows are so silly. The idiotic rules. Oh, no, Mary. It's not idiotic. I mean, it's a wonderful game. It's like a real horse race. I love that game, Mary. <laughs> but, Ted, I mean, the contestants made to look ridiculous. Oh, the no, silly costumes. no. They didn't look ridiculous at all. They just wore little jockey hats and sat in wooden horses. <laughs> it all... It's lonely with Ted gone. Georgette, he's only been gone a few hours. <laughs> yes, but with Ted, a few hours can seem like a lifetime. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Everything was really delicious, Mary. Thanks. I especially love the mushroom omelet. You make it exactly the same way I do. Oh, really? Yes. You'll have to give me the recipe sometime. <laughs> Help. What's on your mind? It's not going to be easy, Mary. Georgette, what is it? It's something I can't discuss. Well, Georgette, if you can't discuss it, then how can I help you? I told you it wasn't going to be easy. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what. Why don't you just say it straight out? Just... I have an impure thought, and I'm ashamed of myself for having it. <laughs> when I dropped Ted off at the airport this morning, I wished him good luck with his audition. But down deep, do you know what I was really hoping? I was hoping he'll fall on his keister. <laughs> Please forgive my language. It's just the buttermilk talking. <laughs> Mary, if Ted gets this audition and goes to live in New York, he'll forget all about me. Oh, Georgette. Oh, after two weeks there, he'll have Barbara Walters breaking down his bedroom door. I can't believe that. Neither could I when Ted told me. <laughs> going to do? Well, in the first place, you're going to stop feeling guilty about the way you feel. I mean, Georgette, I've known you for three years. I think I can honestly say you have never had an impure thought in your life. And in the second place, I really don't think you have anything to worry about. I mean, Ted is a very <clears throat> talented man. <laughs> but New York is highly competitive. I don't think Ted has a chance of making it. With the quiz show or with Barbara Walters? <laughs> You're number two, and you, Mrs. Franklin, are on horse number three. Okay, everybody, we're ready to do the next audition tape. Uh, Ted Baxter. Yo! <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hello. All right, Mr. Baxter, here are the names of the contestants and some jokes which our five writers have done. Five writers? Well, this really is a big time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if I had jokes like this in the news, I'd have been a star long ago. That's for WJM. Yeah. Oh, hi, Georgia. Hi, Mary. What you got there? I have to bring it down to Ted's car. It's some things he wants to take to New York to remind him of all the wonderful times he had here. Oh, how nice. You know, things like pictures, letters, awards. Aww. Pencils, paper clips, ballpoint pens. Light bulb? I guess I got everything, Georgia. Uh, you want to put this in there, too? Okay, Tim. I'll get you down in the car. Okay. Bye, Mary. Bye, Mary. Bye, Georgia. Well, this is it. Ted Baxter's farewell. But unlike General Douglas MacArthur, I shall not return. Gee, Ted, the folks on Batan are really going to be choked up about that. <laughs> Well, I... I better get going, George. It's waiting for me. Well, aren't you going to stay and say goodbye to... Oh, well, no, I've got too many things to do. I'll just call him from the airport. Barry? I just want you to know I appreciate everything you've done for me. Because the words you wrote made me what I am. Gee, Ted. I feel four feet tall. <laughs> Mary? Ted. <laughs> Goodbye.
Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Stay. <laughs> what? What did you say, Lou? Lou? Did, did you say something? Yeah. I said stay. Gee. That's one of the nicest things anyone ever said to me. I'd like to stay, Lou. I, I love it here, but this is my big chance. For what, Ted? So you can go to New York and become a quiz master? <laughs> is that what you want people to say when you walk down the street? There goes Ted Baxter. He's a quiz master. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad, Lou. Just the way you say it makes it sound terrible. Oh, yeah? Then you say it, Ted. Say, Ted Baxter is a quiz master. <laughs> Ted Baxter is a quiz master. <laughs> you see, Ted, you have to do what you think best. Don't return. Gee, Ted, the folks on Batan are really going to be choked up about that. <laughs> well, I... I better get going, George. It's waiting for me. Well, aren't you going to stay in... Say goodbye to Oh, Mr. no, I've Grant. got too many things to do. I'll just call him from the airport. Barry, I just want you to know I appreciate everything you've done for me. Because the words you wrote made me what I am. Gee, Ted, I feel four feet tall. <laughs> Mary? Oh, Ted. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Stay. <laughs> what? What did you say, Lou? Lou? Did, did you say something? Yeah. I said stay. That's one of the nicest things anyone ever said to me. I'd like to stay, Lou. I, I love it here, but this is my big chance. For what, Ted? So you can go to New York and become a quiz master? <laughs> is that what you want people to say when you walk down the street? There goes Ted Baxter. He's a quiz master. <laughs> It's not that bad, Lou. Just the way you say it makes it sound terrible. Oh, yeah? Then you say it, Ted. Say, Ted Baxter is a quiz master. <laughs> Ted Baxter is a quiz master. <laughs> you see, Ted... You have to do what you think best. But I want you to know that I will always think of you as a newsman. You mean that, Lou? You always serve the people by broadcasting the truth. You should be proud of that. Oh, sure, there are lots of other jobs that pay more, that are less demanding, but they contribute nothing toward the public's well-being or understanding. A newsman's life has meaning. I mean, you were following in the tradition of men like Charles Collingwood, Elmer Davis, and Edward R. Murrow. There's no finer way a man can spend his life than that. Ted? <laughs>